on guys it's caleb and today we have a mark seven and a half or a 2019 volkswagen golf r in indium gray in the shop for a major paint correction coating now whenever i say mark seven and a half i just want to get this out of the way real quick for those who don't know that is pretty much just describing what generation the golf r is throughout volkswagens you have different marks whatever that differentiate the generation so mark four mark five mark six mark seven mark seven and a half which is this one is 2018 till 2022 when the new golf r's recently came out i just wanted to get it out of the way real quick because i'll be saying it a lot through this detail but as i said it's in for a major paint correction we're going to be shooting for 85 to 90 percent corrected give or take here and there at least what's available to us this thing was previously wrapped so there's some things i can't get and we'll describe that later on but i have the car for about a week give or take to get it nice and cleaned up we're going to start with these rse 102 new speed wheels getting nice and cleaned so sit back and relax i think i'm going to make this one a pretty laid back and chill one To get things started off, we're going to go ahead and foam the car down. Now, as I've said in previous videos, we're going to go ahead and work this one side at a time. So starting with the passenger side, then I'll rotate to the front, driver's side, then rotate to the rear. That way I have plenty of time to work with that area with a brush and some Meguiar's D101 all-purpose cleaner. Now, if you're in a controlled environment or an environment that's not necessarily Florida, <laughs> you don't really have to worry about this too much. But over here in Florida, for example, it's really important to practice something like this because there are days, especially 90% of the summer, where one side will drive faster than the other. And if you do this way easier to micromanage the paint.
washing we're going to be using Stoner Car Care's Ceramic Prep Wash. They sent this to me actually quite a while ago and I've used it a little bit here and there behind the scenes and with this car I figured this would be a good time to do it because I personally put on a spray sealant with this paint and I wanted to make sure it was taken off and the Stoner's product worked actually really good to do that. On other cars, you know, you're never really sure as to whether or not something is or actually isn't on the paint unless you're told so, but with this car in particular, I did it before so I knew what was on it. Now the ceramic prep wash did a great job at stripping off the sealant that was still on the paint, but we still have to decontaminate it and that's why we're doing a clay bar. And as we go through the clay bar portion, you'll see this car was pretty contaminated up and when it comes to golf bars, the majority of your contamination is going to be on the back hatch just because of the way the aerodynamics work with these cars. So whenever you do a golf bar or GTI or just about any hatchback really, just make sure you spend a little extra time in the back because trust me, when you think you're done, you're not really done.
All right, so since I'm just finding stuff, let's just go ahead and roll into a paint inspection and see how this baby looks. I was about to switch lenses and grab the tape and do a cool little tape up the car scene it started making sense to me having all of this random adhesive underneath the trim my first immediate thought just from working with Tyler a lot is this car has been wrapped before but figuring yeah, it's not that big of a deal whatever it also could have been tape or whatever the heck else and then as I'm going around the paint just one last time without the camera because usually I do a little scene to show the paint and then I go through it myself just to double check I found this if you see this right here That is the remnants of purple vinyl. All this is all adhesive. Put that right there, and a little bit of extra trim or waterproofing has popped out. So there's our answer. It's been wrapped before, and they just did a very poor job at removing it. Obviously, whenever you see adhesive lines, it really makes you wonder if it had been wrapped previously or there was tape, like I said. But originally, I saw this weird kind of what looked like paint being peeled back from the side mirrors. It kind of freaked me out. I even messaged the owner, and because the vinyl is this satin kind of sheening purple metallic, with my light, it kind of sheened a little brown because of the flake in it, and I thought it was surface rust. And I started freaking out. I started messaging the owner. I'm like, dude, this is surface rust. Like, I don't know what's going on here. But then I found that piece of wrap, and then finally he messaged me back, and it all came together and could chill out for a little bit. Right off the bat from the half and half, you tell that there was a yellowing starting to happen of the clear coat. And although this would seem like a shocker because this is a 2019 Golf R, but it was wrapped like we had found out. And whenever a wrap isn't properly UV protected, over time it can kind of eat away and start to yellow the clear coat. If you don't believe me, go watch the Catastrophe Mustang detail I did with vinyl stripes. I'll leave it in the description. It is abhorrent. <laughs> but I will say the Stoner Car Cares compound worked fantastic for this car, mostly because German cars have very hard paint and doesn't correct is easy and you need something that really has a good bite to it and this stuff definitely does check the description as well for that because i have it linked down below they are a sponsor of the channel wonderful wonderful people
throughout the cutting process, it was so hard to try to get you guys a before and after like I normally would just because of this color. It's a dark, it's a gray, it's a metallic, not just a metallic, it's a heavy flake metallic. So there were only a few particular ways that I was able to manipulate the light to get you guys to see it, such as the driver's side door. You guys saw those imperfections perfectly. And you would ultimately think, hey, just take what you did on the driver's side door and put it on the passenger side, but it doesn't work the same because of the lights that are above me in the rafters in the ceiling. It just doesn't work. But throughout the process, there were a couple times that I noticed just from now editing footage that after I finished wiping off the compound, you can see the clear panel and it's in focus. I wasn't able to get any B-roll or fancy shots, but I'll leave those clips in so that way you guys can see them from time to time. Let's go ahead and do the hatch now and then we'll cut the driver's side and call it done. Alright, let's go ahead. Close this down. Alright, so the rear taillights, as you can see, they have like oxidation or fading starting to form on top of the tint that kind of smokes them out. And I'm not going to take the tint off. I was going to go ahead and message the owner and see if he wanted me to, but in the time frame, as well as the amount of UV damage that are on them, it's going to take a while to use a steamer and work them off slowly but surely. We don't have time for that with this detail. So when I go through with a light polish at the very end to refine everything with perfect finish, I'll probably hit them real quick just to bring back a little bit of gloss. A lot of people might know, but when it comes to vinyl wrap and PPF and even some cases like tint like that, you can polish it very lightly, very lightly. You usually never want to, but in this situation, I'm going to hit it real quick with some perfect finish at the end of everything before we coat it. And then that should take care of it for now. But yeah, they are, uh, it's pretty rough, pretty, pretty rough. Not good. If you remember earlier when I spoke about the hatch having the most contamination, that is the absolute truth. It is not just the only place it gets the most contamination, it gets the most dirtiest, the most dustiest, the most scratched up and everything. So even though you might get a GTI or a Golf R perfectly corrected in the back, just, just know that after a month or so of driving it and you get done doing your first wash and you wipe it back down with quick detail or whatever the case is, it's definitely going to have some swirls. Now thankfully Volkswagen Audi's harder paint so it's not going to swirl and scratch nearly as easily, but don't be surprised if you have a few little doo-doos here and there because trust me due to the turbulent air from the aerodynamics of these cars it's gonna happen now there is a way to avoid this if you have a gti or a golf r i don't know which setup in particular but if you have the right setup with the wing and rear diffuser you can kind of avoid this issue
All right, so now that we've pretty much finished up all the cutting, I'm sure over here, there we go. Now we're gonna go ahead and put on a yellow Rupes pad with some Sonax, perfect finish, the usual combo, and start refining it. I'm not gonna do a whole lot tonight. It's starting to get late here, it's about 8 p.m. I am, though, going to go ahead and refine the hood real quick, just see how it turns out, because I know it's gonna look fantastic, and I'm so excited, because this is one of my favorite parts of the paint correcting process. So, probably tomorrow, midday, we should be able to finish up refining and move on to coating, but for now, I really wanna give this a shot. Now, before anyone says, whoa, that was way too much polish, no, I'm, I'm just priming the pad. Anytime you get a brand new fresh pad or you're starting off on a new session, just make sure you prime the pad, take a little extra polish or compound, put it in there and work it just for about 20 seconds or so.
Yeah, that looks good. That looks really good. I'm running out of polish. Now it's time to get this thing nice, prepped, and ready to apply a coating. First thing we're going to do is blow off the entire car because although Perfect Finish is an amazing product, it just dusts so bad over time and it's so annoying. Next step on the list is to wipe the car down with a dedicated microfiber and an IPA, isopropyl mixture. Get that paint nice and squeaky clean, get all those oil residues out of there. And lastly, I take a microfiber towel, spray some IPA in it, take a cocktail stick, toothpick, and I go through every nook and cranny and trim piece and crevice you can think of to get rid of any polishing residue or dirt that might be there. I I call this toothpickery. I learned that from Jim from White Details. Amazing guy. If you love what I do and you just want to see it on a much grander scale, something that I aspire to be, check out White Details on YouTube. Amazing, amazing guy. I've learned so much from him. Now to coat the car, we're going to be using Crystal Serum Light matched with XOV4 from G-Technic. Most of the time, I use this product as well as Drexler's. They're both really good, solid, consumer-grade products. And although, for example, G-Technic, you can go and go through the courses and do all this stuff to get, you know, Crystal Serum Ultra, but it's like, this stuff works so good as it is, and it's so easily accessible, and why would I want to go through that? Now, does me saying that maybe hurt my relationship with G-Technic? That could happen in the future? Yeah, probably, but it's the truth of the matter. You know, this stuff is really good, and it is consumer grade, but it works just as great, if not better, than a professional grade product, and it's just as easily accessible. You just apply it, wipe off, and then get a new applicator, apply EXO, wipe off, and if you want to, apply a second coat of EXO, and then wipe off. To give it like 24 hours, and the car looks just amazing.
It's the next day and the coating's kind of cured at this point, so we're going to wrap up the last few things to get this car ready for pickup. That consists of a few things, like you're seeing here, we're going to get these exhaust tips nice and polished up and apply some Q2 rim, and then we're going to go ahead and coat the face of the wheels with Q2 rim as well. Treat the tires, apply dressing, and a windshield coating. Yeah, windshield coating. Terminator from Stoners is fantastic to get tires prepped for a dressing. Whether it be fresh from factory and there's still that silicon, greasy, nasty stuff on there, or a previous dressing that's really stubborn and didn't come off from wheel cleaner, this is super easy to use. You just spray it into a towel, wipe the tire, give it a few seconds, really, and then you can apply dressing. I personally use Meguiar's Hyper Dressing as dressing. I know it's an interior detailer sort of thing, but if you apply it with a brush, let it sit for 10 minutes, come back after and wipe it down. Looks fantastic. It's that matte, satin, factory look. And then to wrap everything up, we're going to apply the windshield ceramic coating from Sonar's as well, and we're pretty much done with this. It was really exterior oriented, we just wanted to get this thing nice and beautiful and ready for the road. And I think we accomplished that pretty well, if you guys see here. I will say stick around for the ending cinematic, because the after shots are just astounding. The car looks so freaking good. Otherwise guys, I think we've reached the end of this video. Seriously, if you stuck around this long and you enjoyed it, please show me by leaving a like. And if you like car content or car detailing content, go ahead and press subscribe and ring that bell to know every single time I upload. Other than and that we're done so i'll see you guys next week with uh, another video yeah see you